What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Drip Strick College Football Podcast. Mm. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jacob, and I'm with my other co-host, Austin. Austin, what's up, buddy? Man, I'm doing good, man. How about you? Dude, I'm doing fantastic. I'm I'm so excited to record another episode of this fantastic podcast. Mm. Last week, we mm. talked about recruiting. We talked about all the recruitings, did all that kind of stuff. This week, we got transfer portal. We got lots of stuff. We got transfer portal. We got uh, offensive coordinators, defensive coordinators. Uh, and we got to talk about Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC. So let's start off with the top ten players in the transfer portal class. We're just going to go over the top ten players, and we're going to talk about the impact that they'll have at uh, the team they're going to. So we'll start off with Davison Igmanosan. Mm. Uh, he's a defensive back from Ole Miss. He's transferring to Ohio State. And uh, I think mm. this is going to be a really good pickup for Ohio State. Um, they have a really good history with turning um, DBs into superstars. Jeff Okuda, uh, Sean Wade, um, some notable guys. There's a bunch more. Um, so I think this is a great pickup for Ohio State. He's a great DB. And uh, we'll see what happens with him. Yeah, man. I think... Uh... Yeah. You know, the moral of the story is he didn't want to go to a bad college. You know, he didn't want to be God. where the people are just bad. They're bad people. You know, he wanted to have somewhere with a little bit of class, you know, where they uh, they have a winning environment, you know, uh, in, their, in their football locker room. So, obviously, he just wanted to get get out of Oxford, Mississippi, probably one of the probably the worst town in America. And, uh, you know, w- wanted to go play for a real school. And so, you know, he went over there down to Columbus, uh, Columbus Ohio, man, and, Hopefully he's good for him, man. I'm glad he uh, he hashtag dipped from the sip, man. I'm really glad he dipped from the sip and uh, went to Ohio State. So uh, you know, shout out to him. He he escaped the uh, the nightmare that is Ole Miss. So shout out to him, man. Uh, number nine, we got Jordan Bush, transferring from South Carolina to Oregon. He's an edge rusher. Uh, a great pickup for Oregon. Uh, they do need edge rushers, especially in the Pac-12 where defense does not exist. Um, so we'll see what happens. Maybe he can do something there. Maybe not. We'll see. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, South Carolina saw, lost two really big guys in the portal. Obviously, I know they gained a lot from the portal, too. But, yeah, just a, a bad loss for South Carolina. I know they hate it. And a uh, great pickup from Oregon. They did a lot of stuff this offseason. Dan Lanning did a whole whole lot of work this offseason. So shout out to Oregon. And at number eight, we got Jaheim Bell, tight end, transferring from South Carolina. Another guy transferring from South Carolina to Florida State. Um, he's going to be, uh, what's his, Jordan Travis's next big target. Um, I'm sure he'll have a big impact there. Um, so we'll see what happens with him. Yeah, I mean, this was another huge loss for uh, for them, man, for Shane Beamer, man. A big loss for South Carolina and uh, – I kind of hate it for him because, I mean, I know Jaheim Bell is, you know, he was a baller, you know, mm-hmm. and they were going to look really looking forward to having him. So, you know, great, great pickup by Mike Norvell, man. He got that, uh, got that huge extension. I think he's going to be making like $8 million annually or whatever his uh, extension was. So, shout out to Mike Norvell and great, great pickup for him at that tight end position, man. And at number seven, we got Dominic Levette, a wide receiver. Transferring from Missouri to Georgia, a target for whoever's going to be Georgia's quarterback next year, um, alongside Brock Bowers and McCockney. Um So Georgia just gets scarier, man. Georgia just gets scarier. Georgia's biggest question next year, though, is quarterback. Who's going to be the quarterback? Um, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Dominic, Dominic love it, man. When, uh, when Missouri got him last year, dude, I couldn't believe it. I think they got him, I want to say it was last year. When uh, he went to, uh, he was a recruit, but he was a great, great player, a great recruit, and you know he had a great season for Missouri, and he was definitely their their number one target. And I was really looking forward to seeing what he was going to do at Missouri. And then he entered the transfer portal, and I didn't know where he was going to go. I knew he was going to go somewhere where they, you know, they had a lot of talent, and uh, I knew he was going to go somewhere if he did leave Missouri. That he was going to go somewhere bigger than Missouri. So going to Georgia, man. He's going to thrive there, and he's going to catch a lot of passes next season, man. I'm just I'm letting everybody know now to be on watch for uh, for Dominic Lovin, man. Great, great player. 
And, uh, yeah, that's all I got, man. Number six, we got Devin Leary, quarterback, heading from NC State to Kentucky. This is a great pickup for Kentucky, replacing Will Levis, who's heading to the NFL draft. Devin Leary was possibly, before he got hurt, the best player in the ACC last year and the year before. Mm. Um, there was a lot of ha- hype surrounding him, and then he got injured towards the beginning of the season. He, get, he didn't get to play much. Uh, people were projecting him to be in the first-round pick in the NFL draft, but injuries ruined that for him. He's heading to Kentucky, going to play in the SEC, the best conference in the world, and uh, we'll see what he does there. Uh, I think this is, a, this is a great pickup, though, for Kentucky. Yeah, I was a little bit uh, shocked that he left NC State. I just felt like he was so at home. At NC State, a huge loss for NC State, like, either way, you know, they lost him, yeah, like you said, like, uh, in the beginning or, like, middle of the season, maybe beginning of the middle, and, uh, you know, NC State was never the same, so I don't know how they're going to be next year, but huge get for Kentucky, you know, after, I know their backup wasn't, I don't think he was too good, and obviously losing Will Levis to the, uh, to the draft, you know, obviously, you know, a good player, so, I mean, to get, to get another guy, like Devin Leary, who's a baller, he can make plays, and that's great, man. Uh, shout out to Kentucky; they got a great quarterback, one of the one of the best quarterbacks in the portal. And at number five, we got Sam Hartman, our boy Sam Hartman, quarterback. Oh, yeah. He's heading from Wake Forest to Notre Dame. An amazing pickup for Notre Dame. Sam Hartman's been an under under the radar quarterback. Uh, he was fantastic last year. Uh, threw a lot of touchdowns. Threw a lot of passing yards. Uh, he, he was great, uh, especially for uh, the beginning of last year. He was having some, uh, I think it was heart problems or something. Yeah. Um, and people didn't think he was going to play, but, I mean, he came back like second or third week uh, and played really well. So Sam Harden, Sam Hartman heading to Notre Dame, great pickup for Notre Dame. Yeah, man. He's had, I mean, the last two years he's had phenomenal seasons, man. He's had... Great numbers, great, great numbers at Wake Forest. And uh, I know this sucks for Wake Forest, but, I mean, y'all were lucky to have Sam Hartman for as long as you did. You know, he was just an outstanding player, one of the one of the best. And if not, he probably is the best player in the portal, man. He just he makes, makes plays. And I think, you know, he, he's going to be on a better team at Notre Dame next year where he's really going to shine, you know. He's going to be great for Notre Dame. I cannot wait to see him play against uh, maybe a little bit harder competition. And, uh, I mean, I think, you know, for Notre Dame, you know, a bigger school than Wake Forest, you know, they got their guy. They got their quarterback for next year. And if I'm a, if I'm a Notre Dame fan, man, I'm feeling great about this. For Sam Hartman is a great, great quarterback, one of the best quarterbacks in the country. So, man, great, great pickup. Number four, we got Fentrell Cypress, uh, a DB mm-hmm. heading from Virginia to Florida State. A great pickup for Florida State. Uh, a lot of people – Got a lot of hype going around Florida State. A lot of people think they're going to be one of the best teams in the country next year, and I'm pretty I'm sure Fentrell Cypress will have a big part in that. Yeah, yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, and just a great another pickup from Florida State, man. Mike Norvell really went hard. Uh, he got some great guys in the portal, two guys in the top ten, as y'all can see. And uh, yeah, man, Fentrell Cypress, shout out to him, man. Great, great pickup for Florida State. Number three, we got another DB. It's Denver Harris. He's heading from Texas A&M, poverty team, Texas A&M, <laughs> to LSU. Once again, another team that has a lot of hype surrounding them. A lot of people think LSU are, is going to do really good in the SEC next year. And Denver Harris will have a big part in that. Uh, so shout out Denver Harris. Yeah, man. He's a uh, he's a guy from that Texas A&M Draft class last year, I mean, recruiting class last year. He's he's a five star, one of the best players in the country last year. And uh, when he entered the portal, man, I really didn't know where he was going to go because he he has so many years of eligibility left, and he was such a great player in high school. He really didn't play much in at Texas A&M, I don't think. So I knew he was going to go somewhere very good in LSU, man. Great pickup because he's going to have a lot of eligibility left. Uh, you know, they've had some great guys over there at LSU at the DB position. So you know, Denver Harris is going to have a great great amount of years to grow and just get better and playing in the best conference in football, like you said. So, yeah, great, great pickup for uh, for Brian Kelly, man. And at number two, we got Ernest Haasman, a linebacker heading from Nebraska to Michigan. A great pickup for Michigan. 
Uh, Michigan, another team that has a lot, a lot of hype surrounding them. Um, so we'll see what Ernest Hossman can do next year. Yeah, man, it's a linebacker position. And I feel like, uh, I don't know, I'm not too sure, but I feel like Michigan's probably losing a lot of players to the draft on that defensive mm-hmm. position. So, you know, for them to get a big, good, really good linebacker like him, man, I think that's very important. That's going to be very important to their uh, success next year if they can keep some guys back uh, on that defense. Because, yeah, I know they are they don't want to just make the playoffs next year. You know, they got J.J. McCarthy coming back and Blake Corum, Donovan Edwards coming back. So, so, so they need to get as many guys in the portal as they can, and this was a great, great pickup, man. And at number one, of course, is Travis Hunter, the DB, heading from Jackson State, following his daddy Dion to Colorado. <laughs> uh, obviously a great pickup, uh, five-star, even in the transfer portal. Uh, he had a great season at Jackson State. Uh, so we'll see what he does at the FBS level playing uh, against the Pac-12 and uh, we'll see We'll see what happens with him. I'm excited to see what he does next year. Yeah, man. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I didn't like he was kind of, you know, acting weird when he entered the transfer portal, like where he was going to go. And I don't know if you saw, but like he said, like if he got 100,000 subscribers, that's when he was going to like make his yeah. video. And so he did get 100,000 subscribers and then obviously went to Colorado five star. Got a lot of years of eligibility. One of the greatest recruits of all time. And he's going to Colorado, man. Shout out Travis Hunter. Hopefully, I don't know. I want him to play both positions, man, wide receiver and cornerback. Because, I mean, he can be fun he to can watch. do both at a high level. He can really do both at a high level. And he's going to be, you know, he's prime time over there in Colorado. He's he's awesome. So, great, great pick for Dion to bring him over there. You know, right when he kind of signed, uh, right when Dion went to Colorado, you kind of knew that he was bringing one of the best recruits yeah. of all time. You know, he wasn't just going to sit at Jackson State without Dion. So, so shout out to uh, Travis Hunter and shout out to Prime Time for bringing him there, man. Uh, and then now we're going to talk about. We're just going to briefly go over the top five teams uh, in the transfer portal rankings. Mm-hmm. Starting at number five, we got. Auburn, we got Auburn. Hugh Freeze comes in. First off season for Hugh Freeze, uh, getting yeah. ready for his first season. Uh, and he brings in a fantastic transfer class. Lots of offensive linemen, which is what we desperately need. Uh, and a lot of good playmakers. Everything around the – everything, bro. He just – is great. I love Hugh Freeze. I love him so much. Um Number four, Colorado. Obviously, they pretty much have brought in a brand new team. Colorado oh, yeah. last year was horrible, had zero talent on their team. So, Dion brings in his team pretty much. Um, number three, USC. Uh, they got a lot of holes to fill. Um, wide receiver. I mean, they got they got holes, but they got a great transfer class. They're going to be good next year. Florida State. Another really good transfer class for them. Uh, at number one, got LSU. They got a lot of holes to fill. They're going to be a really good team next year, so watch out for LSU. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, man, yeah. Um, And then next, Alabama has hired their offensive coordinator and their defensive coordinator. Um, their offensive coordinator, Tommy Rees, he was a quarterback at Notre Dame. And then he was coaching at Notre Dame for the longest time. Um, I think this is definitely a step up from um, Bill O'Brien. Um, Thomas Rees, or Tommy Rees, has a has an old, older school um, style of football. So he needs to walk up in there, go up to Nick Saban and say, I'm going to do my job, leave me alone. Um, and they also hired for their defensive coordinator, Kevin Steele, He's heading back to Alabama after being gone for a little bit. He was the defensive coordinator at Miami. He was the defensive coordinator at Auburn. He did a really good job at Auburn. I loved him especially. Uh, so it kind of paid me to see him go to Alabama. It's our crosstown rivals. But those are the two coordinators that Alabama has hired. Um, if you want yeah, to say man. anything about him, you can. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is big. You know, I know a lot of people – you know, living in Alabama, I've been hearing a lot of people just complain about both of their coordinators, you know, saying they, you know, we're never going to win a championship with these coordinators. So, I mean, they got rid of both of them. 
You know, they didn't even have to fire up, fire him like uh, officially. They just had they, they got rid of both of them, replaced them. Kevin Steele, uh, you know, obviously, I mean, he wasn't on a great Miami team last year, but I know he's he's done things, and I know Saban. You know, he's a Saban guy. He's worked under Saban. I think yeah, this is his third stint with Saban, so you know he's he's built that trust, and he's definitely you know, and nobody knows his scheme probably better than him. And uh, Tommy Reese, just you know, that's a. Uh, you know, I think he's been there. I think he's been coaching maybe for, I think this might like three seasons at Notre Dame. And he's, you know, he's done mm-hmm. a great job there. And so hopefully he, uh, he brings it to Bama because, I mean, there's a, just a different level of, uh, of prestige to Alabama. Like, you know, everybody knows you. You know, Alabama, mm-hmm. you're at Alabama, you know, they're the, you know, they're the biggest school in football, you know. And if you're the offensive coordinator, coordinator there, I mean, you know, a lot of, pr- that's a lot of pressure on you. You know, Bill O'Brien was a head coach in the NFL. And, you know, he wasn't doing good as an offensive coordinator at a college. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's a different mm-hmm. type of pressure. And hopefully uh, hopefully Tommy Reese can, can live up to the hype, man. For sure, for sure. Um, next, I'm going to talk about Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC in 2024. They re- finally reached an agreement, an exit agreement. Um, so two of the Big 12's best teams heading to the SEC – um, I think this will be two big changes for Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, I don't think they'll be putting up as good of a, a record as they normally do because the SEC is a tougher conference. Um, so, But this is a, gr- a good move for both of them, especially recruiting-wise, because who doesn't want to play in the SEC? Um, so I think it's a good move by both of them. Uh, and also, 12-team playoff happening in 2024, same year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A lot of changes, and they haven't uh... – Said what they're going to do with like divisions yet with the uh, East and West. They don't know what they're what they're going to do. I'm uh, I'm really going to be interested to see what they da- uh, do with all that. And uh, yeah. but yeah, man, a year earlier, you know, I mean, I think they've got to pay uh, Oklahoma and Texas have to pay their conference like a whole lot of money to get out a year earlier. But I think they will. But uh, but yeah, dude, a year earlier, that's kind of that's going to be very interesting. You know, this is our yeah. la- next year is going to be our last year where it's going to be like. You know how it's been since like 2011 or 2012 when uh, Missouri and Texas A&M got it's the SEC. So it's going to be really weird. You know, this is going to be the last season. We got to enjoy this for what it is because two two really big names are coming to the SEC in Texas and Oklahoma in all sports. So uh, so I mean, this is going to be very interesting. And a year earlier from what it was supposed to be, that's that's kind of crazy. crazy. But I'm, I'm looking forward crazy. to uh, to what it's going to be in 2024. Man, it's going to be. It's going to be kind of like a whole new, whole new conference with those two, you know, powerhouse programs going in the best conference already. So you know, it's going to be very. I'm going to be very interested to see what's going to happen, man. It's going to be fun. Next up, I'm going to do a little lightning round. We're going to do top five overrated teams for next year. So we're going to just say the top five teams, our top five teams that we think are not worth the hype for next year. Uh, okay. I'll okay. start us off here. Number five, I got Texas A&M. Uh, I just do not think they'll be good. I think Jimbo is a great recruiter, just not a great coach. Uh, he had no handle on the team last year, uh, and it really showed in their record and how they played. Uh, number four, I got Notre Dame. A lot of people are hyping them up a lot. I don't think they'll be a bad team. I just do not think they're worth the hype for next year. Mm-hmm. Number three, I got Alabama. Um Obviously, lots of talent everywhere, but I just don't think you got a question mark at quarterback. Um, got a couple other question marks. New coordinators. We'll see how, what happens, but I wouldn't rank them so high just yet. Number two, I got USC. You lose Jordan Addison, um, and you lose the Tulane. Just not. I just don't think they're worth the hype for next year. And number one, very controversial, Colorado. Do not think Colorado is worth the hype. A lot of people saying they're going to do great next year. New team, new coach. I just don't think they will. Maybe the year after next year, but for me, not this year. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. So um, for my top five first, I got Notre Dame. I just don't think, you know, you know, new, 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 whole new system, a new offensive coordinator and stuff. Uh, I got Texas. I feel like Texas is overrated every single year. You know, they always have the talent, but they never really, they can never get it, pull out the wins. Oklahoma, 
you know, they were so awful last year. I, I think they're going to be better this year, but not they're still not going to be that good. Uh, number two, I got Texas A&M. I mean, it's pretty much the same reason they were so bad last year. I feel like they're going to be a little bit better, but just not as good. And then last, I got TCU strictly just because of the national championship. Like, honestly, I mean, they just they did so bad in the national championship, you know. I just don't <laughs> feel like. all that? Yeah, I just I feel like they don't just they don't deserve anything, honestly, man. So, uh, so yeah, I that's think, all I got, man. I don't think TCU is gonna be that bad next year. I mean, they get they got two great running backs in the portal. It's just it's just quarterback. Well, I mean, they're gonna be good, but I mean, they're not. They're not. Know, yeah, I they're not. They're not they're gonna, gonna be a great team. I mean, they're, they're gonna not, yeah, they're gonna get wins. They're gonna beat not great teams too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. They got a great yeah. coach, Sony Dykes. Shout out Sony mm-hmm. Dykes. Yeah. Shout out Sony Dykes. And yeah, then, they got a great, great coach, you know. Um, and then that is all I got for today. A short episode. I got you. Yeah, short, but it was good. It was good. And uh, I just got to thank everybody for watching, man. If you have any questions or want us to talk about a topic or anything, just let us know in the comment section. We'd love to talk about your comment you know give you a little quick shout out leave a like subscribe do all that good stuff you know and uh you know follow us on our social medias check out check out all the past podcasts check out our birmingham bowl vlog great check great it out video uh my, video uh, my, yeah honestly my favorite one that we've done so far and uh three words big things coming man big things coming <laughs> You know, we got a lot of big things coming. If I had to say something, to, you know, I had to, if I had to put into three words something about this podcast, it'd be big things coming. Big things you know? coming. I'm very excited about it. Is that you got anything else, man? I don't got nothing else. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want to be a guest, message us. Follow us on all our socials. We thank y'all for watching. See y'all later, man. See you.